Mary, we are on. That little wheel rolls around, but we are so excited. I am so excited to be doing Thursday Connect with someone, not just by myself. <laughs> yes. So if you are joining us online for Thursday Connect, you can type in there. Let us know that you're there. Tell us where you're watching from, and uh, we will kind of watch the chats here in a minute. But this is Pastor Jennifer from ICF Rome for Thursday Connect. And this is Mary Chiari from uh, uh, ICF Rome. Yes, and from Kenya. I'm from Kenya. Yes, yes. and uh, just to kind of give people a chance to get on, Mary, mm -hmm. tell us what Thursday Connect has meant to you in the past even couple years. Okay, uh, Thursday Connect is, my, uh, is very special for me especially in my faith work. Uh, uh, for the past uh, few years, it has made me grow and strong and learn more about, uh, given me opportunity to learn more about God, you know, in a small, you know, uh, um, atmosphere. Uh, and uh, it, it is also very important because uh, it's within midweek, it's my midweek fellowship. Mm -hmm. And like on Sundays when we, you know, we are fed and maybe you don't have time to, you know, to go deep, that's the uh, connect it when you really, you know, have more or less a one-to-one -one and, you know, get also testimonies from others, you know, around uh, the table. Yes, <laughs> yeah. amen. So it's quite, it's quite Hi, Michelle mm -hmm. from Ohio and Barb, we're so happy to see you. Yes. And yes, for Mary saying that it's the midweek fellowship yes. and the midweek boost yeah. in our faith. Yeah. Yeah. And we were even sharing a little bit about wonderful opportunities, but also busy times mm -hmm. and how just pausing for a minute mm -hmm. and studying the word of God just kind of helps you to get refocused, exactly. doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. So um, we're going to start with chapter one of our book. And uh, last week I kind of gave you... <clears throat> the beginning of Be Comforted and the study of Isaiah. Hi, Esther. Happy to see you. Oh, I'm so glad you got your book already. And uh, so, and then we will go over some of these things. So, Mary, let me just ask you, why are you excited to study the book of Isaiah? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm so excited to, to study the book of Isaiah because uh, it's, uh, it's a word, it's God's word of truth. Actually, uh, Isaiah means the salvation of God, of the Lord. So, and this is a message. I think uh, we have been, you know, really uh, blessed, especially those who have accepted Jesus uh, or those who have embraced God's salvation. So this is wonderful to hear, you know, what, you know, the gift that you have accepted, what it has all about. You. Amen. Yes. Amen. And, um, it, you know, for me, you can type it in too. Um, I had to move the camera back just a little bit so we can see. Hi, Nana. So I'm just going to scooch up, up here a little bit. We're so happy to see you, Nana. Nana's going to take a turn with us in the coming weeks as well. Um, for me, when I was looking at this book, Isaiah, yes. and understanding what the writer, uh, the commentary about how Isaiah was in perilous times, yes. and the nations yes. were in turmoil. Exactly. <laughs> Does that kind of sound like our world today? Yeah. The nations in turmoil and, yeah. and in perilous times, mm -hmm. and that Isaiah not only had a word of truth, mm -hmm. but he also had a word of hope. Exactly. And uh, so I think it's awesome when we as believers can say, well, what does God's word, what is the truth about mm -hmm. the world today? Mm -hmm. And what is the hope of Jesus for yes. these times that we're in? Yes. So um, if you have some thoughts about why you want to study Isaiah, we would love for you to put that in the chat. We've got some new people also that are going to be joining us in the next couple of weeks. And one of them, her kids were starting school this week, so yeah. she couldn't join us, but they'll go back and watch the chat later. Yes. So you comment as something speaks to you about why are you excited? Boriana, I know you're going to be joining. Esther, what are you excited to gather 
from studying the book of Isaiah. Write that in the chats. Denise Barb. Barb is my friend from Michigan. She wakes up early and Michelle in Ohio <laughs> yeah, to be with us. Places. Yes. Well, and well, uh, nice <laughs> so happy that you're with us. It's, yeah. it's a really special time. Um, so if we know from Isaiah that God's not finished with us yet. No, we are still a walking process. <laughs> yes. And how long have you been serving the Lord? Well, uh, I've been serving the Lord for more than two decades. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> two decades, and uh, four still... decades, <laughs> and we're still a work in progress. Yes, I still feel, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'll... <laughs> and even this year, especially, I feel like it's made all of us re-examine our faith. In fact, yeah, like, uh, do, can do, I trust God I in mean, the middle of all yes, this? Exactly. <laughs> It has really challenged, you know, not only, you know, uh, you know, the physical, the, you, you know, the usual um, situation, but even the faith. Yes. The faith. Yeah. yeah. We have a theme every year at ICF Rome, and this year our theme has been Faith Moves. And we focus on different areas, but Pastor Rick and I have commented and, and reflected on how the Lord gave us that theme last year in 2019 in preparation knowing that we would need faith to move mountains in 2020. Yes. And um, I've thought back about some of our other themes that it would have been kind of funny if they had been our themes this year, like yes. unstoppable, we can't, oh, we can't stop, stop God yeah. no matter what, yeah. or transformed, mm -hmm. but certainly we've all been transformed during yeah. this time, that champions rise. Exactly. And uh, one that made me laugh, though, one of our themes was make the connection. Exactly. And I was thinking maybe we shouldn't make the connection while we're yeah. supposed to be social distancing. Yes, exactly. But uh, how but this is where the amazing happens. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That was another theme of ours. So, uh, and I'm telling you what, we can't wait to expose and, and not expose, but to share what God has put in our hearts for 2021. We are excited and we, we know that God is doing something. So let's start with page one. And sometimes what we do normally in our Thursday Connect, and I'm just looking at what some of you have written Yes, Mary Davina, the word of hope. Amen. And Nana, yes, awesome. God is faithful. Uh, Mary, why don't you read uh, about God's prophets right there, that second paragraph? Okay, okay. Uh, because God's prophets were correct all the time, they didn't have to explain away their, uh, away their mistakes. If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place, all come true, wrote Moses. That is a message. Um, that is a that is a message the Lord has not spoken. Mm -hmm. We find this in Deuteronomy 18, verse 22. Mm -hmm. uh, to the law and to the uh, testimony, uh, wrote Isaiah. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no right in them. That is Isaiah uh, chapter 8 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. Isaiah was a man who had God's light and he was not afraid to shine. It, to let it shine. <laughs> and that's what I love about Mary. She has God's light in her and she's not afraid yeah, to yeah, let it shine. <laughs> but you know, when we talk about the books of prophecy in the Bible, and Isaiah is the first book of prophecy in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. we all need to be reminded that modern day prophets call themselves a prophet oh, yes. and they prophesy things that don't come true. Yes. Like we know that many said Jesus was coming back 20 yes. years ago, 10 yes. years ago, and that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesus is coming back, but the Bible says no man knows the day or the hour. So yes. Isaiah was saying a true prophet who hears from the word mm -hmm. of the Lord what he speaks does come, come to pass. pass. Yes. And that is one of the things that excites me about this verse. And last week we talked about it, predicted and, and fulfilled. fulfilled yes. Predicted in the Old Testament and, and fulfilled. fulfilled in the New Testament. Yes. yes, so amazing. So if we turn over to uh, page 15 and then page 16, and we think about Isaiah the man, I'm just gonna highlight some of the things and then let Mary also sort of talk about what we're learning in in this turmoil uh, in this man's life. But so he says that he wrote concerning five 
different acts of deliverance mm -hmm. in the book of Isaiah. You know, when you're studying the Bible, if you break it down yes. into some concepts, yes. it helps you to sort of say, okay, what are you saying to me about this? this exactly. So even in perilous times, mm -hmm. what is what can we learn from the Old Testament nations being in peril? Yes. That Remember that uh, we did a book study called Seamless and how there was uh god had a plan yes people the sinned yeah. <laughs> they made Those mistakes yes. and then god had redemption yep. and then there's a promise fulfilled mm -hmm. and so even though i will always declare faith no matter how difficult this world is mm -hmm. god will take back a people that are repentant mm -hmm. that return to him and uh so we see that there was number one the deliverance of judah from a syrian invasion yes. Number two, the deliverance of the nation from Babylonian captivity. Mm -hmm. Number three, the future deliverance of the Jews from worldwide dispersion. Yes. Number four, the deliverance of lost sinners from judgment. Mm -hmm. And number five, the final deliverance of creation from the bondage of sin when the kingdom was established. Mm -hmm. So when we, let's jump down to... Uh, down here in this area mm -hmm. here, Mary. Yes. When we look at the fact that Isaiah was married. Mm -hmm. We know that his wife in chapter eight, verse three was called a prophetess. Mm -hmm. And we don't know if it's because she was married to a prophet or because she also had a prophetic gift, mm -hmm. uh, but he also fathered two sons. Why is all that important for me? Knowing the holy men that wrote the Bible, that they were real men. Yeah. They had a marriage, yeah. they had children. Um, they, we, led, they led a normal life yes. besides their calling. Yes, exactly. Inside their ministry. Mm -hmm. yes. So we don't always hear all the stories mm -hmm. of the two brothers fighting and the toddlers learning to walk. And, uh, but we can know that he led a normal life. Yes. And we can learn from someone else that also was a holy man of God. He was called to ministry in the year that King Uzziah died, which was about 739 BC. And he ministered through many reigns of kings as well. What kind of man was Isaiah the prophet? Okay, uh, Isaiah was the, um, the kind of man who, uh, who, who had God, I mean, like we just led, that uh, he had the light of um, he had that light of God, mm -hmm. and he didn't just cover it; he let it shine. Yes. So he was also the, in, um, in touch with God, yes. meaning uh, he he had the God's word for truth. You mm -hmm. know, he embraced God's word, and he spoke. As we again we have seen that a prophet speaks the truth or speaks you know the the exact uh, word that. Uh, the what he prophesies comes true. Yes. So he he uh, he talked of God, the, the truth, the true word of God. Yes. Yes. And he was a man of faith because he was believing in something that yes. wasn't yet so. To the faith. Messiah, the return of the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. and that's what faith is: believing in something that we don't yet see mm -hmm. with our physical eyes, yes. but we hear the word of the Lord. And we stand fast on that. And as we said, if you joined us, hi, um, Anthony, I believe. Thank you for joining us. We're glad you're there, and Mary Davina. That when it was predicted in the Old Testament, it was fulfilled in the New Testament. And there are many things that have been predicted in the New Testament that have been fulfilled or are being fulfilled or will be fulfilled, which yes. is totally amazing. He heard God's message and he sought to bring the nation back to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for translating. Also, those of you that are helping Boyana and different ones, I have to reach up here to kind of scroll down. Yes. He was a man of faith. Yes. Uh, I love that mm -hmm. Isaiah was a man. Uh, we're on page 16 mm -hmm. at the bottom, if you yeah. have your book. Isaiah was a man who loved his nation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the Kenyans in our church. Mary is from Kenya, and you love your Kenyan love traditions and yes. your Kenyan yes. uh, food and your Kenyan customs. Yes. It's, I love my Texas roots yes. and also my Michigan roots. Of fall is a beautiful time in Michigan, huh, Barb? We love the pumpkin patch and yes. the fall colors. Yes. But there's nothing wrong with loving your nation. Yes. Isaiah was a man who loved his nation. How do we know that? Because the phrase, my people, was used 26 times 
in his book. It says he was a patriot with a true love for his country. You know, our world is in such turmoil right now. I feel like the enemy of our soul wants all of us to hate where we live. Exactly. He wants us to hate where we temporarily moved. He yeah. wants us to feel mad at our countrymen. Mm -hmm. And that is not what God's word teaches us. Or even hate, uh, you know, our people hate each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, God says, you know, we be in a good relationship with one another. Yes. You see? So when you, and you love one another. So when you love, when you love your people, you cannot do harm to them. Yes. You go extra mile yes. to see that, you know, they get all what they need. Absolutely. And when God places you, like we have just seen with the, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah was just a non, you know, just like any other person today. But you see, he goes an extra mile, you know, to, he has a passion. He has that heart for the nation and the people. Yes. yes. And can he, you imagine he he worked and did his ministry with many kings and rulers, exactly. not just one. Yes. So he had a lot of personalities. Yes. He had a lot of people probably with different leadership yes, styles, yes. but he never backed up and said, never mind, I can't, I'm not gonna, it's too bad right yes. now. And he had good times and bad yes. times, In fact, but he didn't give up. Told, uh, that, uh, you know, like uh, during the time of King Azar, uh -huh. uh, one of the- they have, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, he, he, no, he he was not Ahaz. Yeah, he, he was not really a very uh, um, accommodating king. Mm -hmm. However, Isaiah did give up. Yes. Yeah, because we also see that uh, he kept on, and you know, until also the time of uh, Hezekiah. Yes. Yeah, you know, he was a great king. Yes. yes. Yeah. And it's hard for us sometimes, I think, to wrap our mind around hundreds of years. Yeah. We, we don't typically live hundreds of years, but I just recently read today about a woman in Japan who's a, I believe she's 118, and her goal is to live to be 120. Wow. 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 <laughs> and um, so amazing. And, and it said something like there was uh, many thousands of people that are over 100 years old living. Yeah. So I thought maybe I'll live to be 80 or 90, but I could be 120. Oh, no, no. Yes. So what we've learned from Isaiah is not only to speak the word of God with truth, mm -hmm. but also with love and hope, yeah. but to love our people, to mm -hmm. love that place. Mm -hmm. yes. Don't let the enemy make you think, I can't love this place mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Because if God has put you there and you're a child of God, then the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. And he has put us in places of influence yes. for a reason for a so that we, not only we will, will we be comforted with the word of God where we are, yes. but, but we, we will bring comfort, comfort to others. Mm -hmm. yes. And I know we do that. Yes. Um, go on over to page 17. If you're in the book, it says he also was a man who hated sin and sham religion or fake religion. Mm -hmm. He, his favorite name for God was the Holy One of Israel. He used it 25 times in the Old Testament. He looked at the crowded courts of the people and he said, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger and gone away backward. He said, woe to them in Egypt. They do not look to the Holy One and they don't seek the Lord. The nation was sinful, but Isaiah was calling them to repent. So what would you say is uh, one of Isaiah's characteristics if he's bold enough to call a nation to repent? Well, he must be so courageous. Yes. In fact, we're told that uh, uh, the public, the same people he really so loved, uh, some were against him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many a time some were against him. Yes. Why? Because there was the you know the fact that he stood with the truth. Yes, he stood with the truth, and so uh, and pointed out you know the sin. Yeah, he was not uh, shy to to point out you know mm -hmm. where where things were not going well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm curious if you're watching. Hi, Ivy. Ivy's joining us from our beloved Kenya. We're yeah, glad you're there. Wanna <laughs> see <you> where Ivy? <laughs> Um, as we think about Isaiah and what he was living in, we can so relate to where we are in our world today. And Mary wrote some notes that are just amazing. And um, when we think about the turmoil and what we're going through now, 
we also know that Isaiah was courageous because he trusted in God. And Mary, give us a couple of those scriptures on Isaiah trusting in God, on how we can trust in God. Okay. Um, okay. Some of the uh, some of the verses that because it's like Proverbs, uh, Proverbs three and verse five, and it, it says, "Trust in the Lord with all your heart." Mm -hmm. That means don't lean on your own understanding, but put your trust in God. Do you also have Jeremiah uh, 17 and verse 7, which uh, says, But blessed is the one yes. who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence in him. I love that. Jeremiah 17:7. 17, 17. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, here's my favorite. <laughs> Actually, it's my key. <laughs> uh, Romans 8:28. And we know in all. Yes. You know, in all, no matter <laughs> the circumstances you may think That's of, it. in all this, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Yes. Like we have seen, uh, Isaiah was called according to, uh, to God's purpose, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, this... Like this year, we are experiencing, you know, everywhere in all the nations, we are experiencing this one, you know, thing about the COVID. Yeah. Yes. How, no matter the situation, you know, God is working this, in, uh, all things for, uh, for the good of his people. Yes. Yeah. Many have really taken time to, you know, to go deep into the word. Many have really uh, turned to God, have returned to God, have repented, have been renewed. Yes. And now we have we are being being comforted. Yes, yes. amen. Yes. And we are comforted along the way because you know we hear the news that oh we may have a second wave of virus or we have elections coming up around the world. We've had them many times in different countries that we represent here at ICF Rome at the International Christian Fellowship. But one thing we know is that my steps as a child of God, Mary's yes. steps as a child of God are ordered by the Lord. He is going to comfort me in times of turmoil. And what I love about Isaiah, it says that he was a courageous man. He was unwavering when it came to public opinion and he boldly declared the word of God. So we have to be, I believe, careful in these days that we don't um, allow the public opinion that is not based on the biblical well, values well, yeah. Yeah. to sway our mind away from yes. what God says. Mm -hmm. So God says, blessed is the one who trusts in me, yeah. Jeremiah 17, mm -hmm. 7. And so I can have confidence in the midst of any circumstance, like Mary just said. Mm -hmm. And he said in Romans 8, 28, that I can know that in all things, he will work good for those who love him. And so trusting God is so important. One of the things I love about Isaiah that we learn here in this book study is that it says Isaiah knew how to stir the imagination of his listeners so that he would arouse their attention for God's truth. Wow. I say wow. that this time right now has aroused attention mm -hmm. for truth. Yes. People are searching that's why our young adults are eager to have online conference and yes. Zoom to talk with one another about what does the scripture really mean during all of this time. But Isaiah did it in such a way that uh, he, he used word pictures. And, and who else do we know in the Bible that used uh, <laughs> parables or word images? So, uh, we, uh, we have Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ used parables. Mm -hmm. And we all know how his ministry went on and how you know, many gathered around him. You know, like used the uh, parables like of the sower, the, parab uh, the parables uh, like uh, of the, you know, the the birds of the air, you know. Yes. For, for provision, you know, the theme is provision. Yeah. Yeah, but if we see him, you know, uh, using uh, that parable, you know, and also, uh, and you know, just to demonstrate that as long as we have confidence, we trust in him. He's able to provide. He's able. He, he's able Amen. to 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 go over and beyond what we can imagine. Amen. Yeah. And. Uh, Mary had written in her notes to move with that fearless dignity yeah. through the chaos of the day, which is so, so important. 
And also the breakdown of first and second section. What did you say it was like? <laughs> I love that. Okay. Uh, well, this one, this one caught me by surprise, Lily. Uh, I have my Bible, which I have not carried today, and I do, which is very good because it has, like, you know, the opening and it gives, you know, uh, like an introduction of the, so, and so when I opened the book of Isaiah, I went to the book of Isaiah, mm -hmm. there was this uh, like introductory part and I, as I read I was like, well, that's why you never have uh, learned the word of God too much, <laughs> yeah. because you all, every time, it's not that I've never gone to the book of Isaiah, right. but now I go to this and I, as I open, you know, I find I, my eyes just set on this wonderful thing and what i like about that is it says that it's like a mini bible and i was like how oh, a mini bible yeah because isaiah has 66 chapters <laughs> actually it's divided exactly like the way we have a bible uh divided you know uh the the first book of the first books of uh, the bible are 39 and the last is uh, the new testament the old testament and the new testament is uh, isn't that awesome i want you to catch that so there's 66 chapters in the book of isaiah yes. and there's 66 books in the bible yes. 39 in the old and 27 in the new so it is a, a, a vision yes. of the bible yes. in exactly. one book i so amazing <laughs> this is something that you read and you're like okay so uh the first section of the first uh, uh 39 chapters of um, of the book of isaiah have a theme of judgment you know mm -hmm. and uh, you know we see that the uh, Judah or, or Israel as a nation, mm -hmm. you know, was idolatrous mm -hmm. with sinful. And we've seen how, what uh, Isaiah was talking about when he, he said uh, that he, uh, he, he was a man who, uh, on page 17, first mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Isaiah was a man who hated sin and shunned religion. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that is a false. Um, Egypt, Egypt, Egyptians, you know, have this uh, fake, I mean, like gods, they had many gods, mm -hmm. but uh, Israelites, as we all know, you know, had one true God, and that's why Isaiah uh, always uh, gave a reference to God as Holy One of Israel. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, for the fact that uh, these first chapters talk about the judgment is because and Israelite had left the, the first love. They had, uh, you know, forgotten what, who was their God, who had, you know, mm -hmm. uh, gotten them from, you know, um, uh, you know, bondage and mm -hmm. had forgotten. Mm -hmm. But the next uh, section, which is uh, chapter, cha the rest mm -hmm. of the chapters, mm -hmm. has a message of hope yeah. you know, <laughs> and declares uh, salvation uh, through the coming of Messiah. Yes. Yeah, so. And you know what? Sometimes I think people think, how could we possibly know about God or Jesus when, you know, we didn't see him? But that's what faith is. I said that before. Yes. And, you know, mm -hmm. I've shared sometimes, I think maybe even our in our Bible study, but um, we went to Russia one time on a mission trip and it was right after the wall had come down and there was some freedom being being provided and there was a woman that invited us there and I remember that when we arrived I was so struck by the fact that everything I saw was gray there was no color the buildings were grayish whitish dirty um, when I saw this woman, her skin, it actually seemed like she hadn't been in the sun. She looked very gray. Um, her clothing was very gray. It just wasn't full of color. And, but she greeted us, our team, and she said, I know that there is more to God. Mm -hmm. And she showed us one page of the Old Testament. I don't even remember what page it was yes. that someone had given her. She had ripped it out of someone or someone had given her a page. You can have one page of my Bible. She had opened that little page like with these little, you know, some of our Bibles have that very thin paper. That's what her paper was like, this very thin paper. And that one page of the Old Testament, she buried it in a plastic bag in her garden. Wow. She didn't want anybody to take 
the Bible from her. That was her Bible. Yeah. But she said every time she would go to the garden, she would pray to God and say, God, I know there's more about you that I don't know. And do you know that within a couple days, that woman had received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Yes. She had a prayer language. I literally watch color come back up in her skin um, from being afraid to being open and confident to share her faith. So the word of God from Isaiah is saying, you know what? You don't have to see it. You just have to believe it. And God will do it. That's what faith yes. is. Yes. And so I love that we can look at what married this analogy of the 39 Old Testament books and the 27 New Testament books, the 39 chapters in Isaiah and the 27 chapters in Isaiah. And we can look at this prophet Isaiah. So I also want us to look, and I've got my phone on too, if anybody needs to message me because I'm missing a message or something while we're... Uh, while we're going along. Um, let's look for a second at just some of the highlights of what was happening. Isaiah was under, like I said, a lot of kings, but he didn't quit, he didn't give up. So he went through a lot of political parties, he went through a lot of upheavals, but he kept firm in the word of God. And so it says that when about one of these kings, Azariah, Uzziah is also called Azariah, that he became the sole ruler and brought the nation to its greatest day since David, page 18. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted to destruction. It goes on to talk about in Second Chronicles. He tried to intrude into the priest's ministry, and God judged this king by smiting him with leprosy. Then there was another one who came after, and um, Ahaz was not one of Judah's good kings. Mm -hmm. So I just want you to see this emotional roller coaster that Isaiah was on. If you ever thought that your life was an emotional roller coaster, it's okay, because Isaiah also had this highs and lows, good leaders, bad leaders, and Ahaz forged political alliances that eventually brought Judah back into bondage, back into Assyria, and Judah was repeatedly threatened by Egypt from the south and by Syria and Israel from the north. Isaiah warned Ahaz that his alliances with godless people, in this case Gentiles, would not work. He encouraged the king in Isaiah 7 to put his trust in, in the Lord. Lord. You know what? You may have political leaders in your city, in your community, even in our condominiums, yes. we have people who decide the, <laughs> the restrictions of time. Yes. We can't make or noise even a here. Of work yes, have a, even a boss, boss, employer. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So see, that's what we do on Thursday Connect. Mm -hmm. We bring it back to where we are, and we say, you know what? Here, Isaiah was saying to these people who led over him that weren't good people, mm -hmm. trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Did you ever? And I know you have have an opportunity with people in a workplace situation mm -hmm. that maybe you were aware that they hadn't personally made that decision to trust in Jesus yet, but they came to you for prayer or they came to you for encouragement? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And so oh, I think even neighbors, yes, friends that we yes. know that we, they're, they're reaching out. Mm -hmm. Because in this COVID, we've had people reaching out yes. saying, help me understand. Mm -hmm. I've had people who've written me privately and countries that I'm not even going to name because they're they're very afraid to be alienated from their family. But they have said, I want to know Jesus the That's Messiah. Yes. I want to know the word of God. So no matter who the person is above you in leadership, good or bad, mm -hmm. Isaiah models for us, encourage them to trust, trust in, in the Lord. Lord. Yes. So then we see that Hezekiah ruled for 42 years and he was one of Judah's greatest yes. kings. What did he do, Mary? He okay. not only he not only uh, strengthened the city uh, of Jerusalem and the nation of Judah, but he led people back to the Lord. Hallelujah! <laughs> he built a famous water system that still exists in Jerusalem. Isn't that amazing? I can't wait to move. <laughs> I was supposed to go to I Jerusalem, but I didn't get to go yet. Yeah. Okay, page nineteen. The ministry of Isaiah spans a period of. Uh, over 50 years from uh, 739 uh, before Christ, uh, the death of Uzziah, uh, Uzziah uh, to 
686 BC when uh, the death of Hezekiah you know, came to be. And it probably extended into the early years of uh, King Manasseh's, Manasseh's reign. Mm -hmm. it, is, it was difficult. It, uh, it was a difficult time uh, of international appeal when first one power and then another <laughs> threatened Judah. Mm -hmm. But the greatest dangers were not outside the nation. They were within. Ah, no, so I, don't I, tell I, me. I, that, I, I know. I, don't tell me that the Bible is not relevant. <laughs> that he, it says when Isaiah was writing, it was one of the most difficult times of international upheaval. Yes. Even though we're seeing peace treaties and things happen, there's still a lot of international turmoil. Mm -hmm. But the greatest danger was not outside. It was from within. Yes. There is a green, green, I, I just put aside in my note, uh, green grass, uh, green snake in the grass. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you have to watch what's yes. happening and with if this. I, if I is there, <laughs> <laughs> so we're in multiple languages today. We are. I love it. That's awesome. That's it's awesome. a metaphor. It's like uh, the kind of language yes. uh, of Isaiah used. Exactly. <laughs> yes. It's so beautiful. When, and so I even want you to think about Isaiah's writing. When you're reading this book of Isaiah and you go back, that you read it not just to know history, because that's kind of the facts and that's the head knowledge, but also to understand Wow, what is Isaiah saying? It says that the whole story of the prophet Isaiah, this was from Campbell Morgan, a British expositor, said that um, this is a man who spoke to an inattentive age or to an age that if they were attentive, they, they mocked him, they refused to obey his message until a prophetic period would draw to a close and then he would say, who hath believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Again, remember, he did not give up. So I really pray that today as we as we dove into this book study online like this, um, that the Lord would direct our conversation. And if you have a comment, if uh, Mary, I saw one of your comments there earlier about we just keep trusting in the Lord. That's so true. Um, what can we learn already from the perilous times that Isaiah was in and how he approached God? When we look at the message of Isaiah, and, and we're flying through this chapter really quick, um, we see that he denounced sin, that he warned of judgment, and that he did plead for repentance. Mm -hmm. And um, that's very important when we study the scripture. Again, we acknowledge that not everything that we do is right, and we have sin in our life. That's why we need Jesus. But if we repent, mm -hmm. his grace and his mercy and the hope of the Messiah changes everything. That's what trusting in the Lord is all about. Let's, I wanna to get to some of our questions in a minute. So let me just jump through here on page 20. If you're watching on page 20, the Jewish rabbis, and, and again, this is kind of still an overview of, of the study of Isaiah, the interspersed messages of hope with judgment, God remembers his mercy even when declaring his wrath, and he assures his people that we have a hope in the future, Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapters 24 to 27 are devoted to songs of hope. So Isaiah always saw a day when peace would prevail. Yes. He always saw a day when the love of God would prevail. Um, it says that in Isaiah, it would be like the book of consolation, mm -hmm. and this that's what the rabbis called it, addressed originally to discourage the, um, to the discouraged Jewish exiles that were returning to a ruined temp temp temple. Mm -hmm. These chapters brought comfort and hope to God's people mm -hmm. in every age and in every kind of difficult situation. Now, Boriana, I know you wrote me something. You could write it right now. The Hebrew word translated comfort also means to repent. But Boyana also found a meaning of comfort that had to do with with strength. Yes. So when we comfort someone, yes. we're saying, I want you to have strength. Um, yeah, be strengthened. Yes, be strengthened. Yes. I'm with you. You're yes. not alone in this. Yes. And so the arrangement is not accidental in this book of consolation, each one focusing on a different person of the Godhead, yes. the greatness of God, 
the grace of God, the Son, and God's suffering servant, and the glory of the future kingdom when the Spirit of God will be poured out on all of God's people. So Mary, what does it say about servant in Isaiah? Okay, uh, so, <clears throat> servant is one of the key words in the second uh, section of the, um, of the book of Isaiah. The word is used seven, 17 times mm -hmm. and has three difficult uh, sorry, different refer uh, reference. The nation of Is uh, Israel, uh, that is from Isaiah, Isaiah 41, 8 to 9, and 43, uh, first 10. Cyrus, uh, Cyrus, king of Persia, whom God uh, raised up to help Israel, restore their nation and rebuild their temple. We see that in uh, Isaiah 44 and uh, verse uh, 28. For then chapter Isaiah 45 and verse 1. We also see the same in uh, Ezra uh, chapter 1 and verse 1. And we're on page 21 in the book, if you're yeah. with us. We're on page 21. Mm -hmm. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as we see in Isaiah 42 and verse 1, Isaiah 19 and 50, uh, 19, and, uh, no, sorry, Isaiah uh, 42 verse 1, and then verse 19. Right. Then we have uh, Isaiah 52, verse 13, and Isaiah 53 and verse 11. The sovereign servant mm -hmm. who died for the sins of the world, mm -hmm. while the Assyrian and Egypt vie for the center stage in chapters uh, 1 up to 39. It is Babylon and Persia that get the attention in chapters 42. Uh, to 66, yes. or rather it's like the the less of uh, uh, the chapters yes. in the book of Isaiah. Amen. So servant is also something. We've seen that he's courageous. We've seen that he trusts God, that he has a message of hope, but he also has a message of truth. But also he speaks about the servant. And, um, you know, sometimes when we read, we're reading about Isaiah and we see what a great man he is. But here it says, Cyrus, the king of Persia, God raised up. God raises up leaders that can help restore nations. And so when we have leaders in place, when we have um, governments in place, when we have structures in place, we can believe that God will put people yes. in their path yes. that will give them good influence, mm -hmm. that will pray over mm -hmm. them, that will give them sound wisdom, and these are important things. It also says that Isaiah had an immediate word of warning to both Israel and Judah that Assyria was on the march and would be used by God to punish them. Occasionally, I, Isaiah used this invasion to picture the day of the Lord, the future time when the world will taste the wrath of God. So again, it's a word picture that, you know, we could use any, many, many countries and say these two were warring against each other, or these two races were warring against each other, or these two families were warring against each other. But sin and darkness is going to war against God and goodness and love forever until the day that we get to stand yes. in the heavens, yes. heavenlies. Yes. And that is what makes us long for heaven to be our home mm -hmm. and not to give up mm -hmm. in our current exactly. walk. Walking, because I'm not going to make heaven mm -hmm. if I give up today and choose not to follow God. Mm -hmm. If I let bitterness or resentment or anger at the turmoil that's going on in the world stop me. But Isaiah persevered in the midst of all this kind of upheaval to continue to give a word for the Lord, a word of promise that God would deliver Mm -hmm. and that there would be a word of hope for the future, that he would rescue them, mm -hmm. and the coming of the Messiah, which we are so thankful Actually, for. Uh, that's why also Paul, you know, uh, you know, in, our, in our days, or rather in the New Testament, he says, you know, he focuses, let's focus on the race. Let's focus, at, you know, yes. to the coming of Christ. Yes. So to get rid of anything that can hold us, you know, yeah. back. You know, like you are saying, the anger, you know, this, uh, you know, turmoil, you know, uh, the chaos, chaos and yeah. all that. No, yeah. we, we put that aside yes. and focus. 
Amen. Amen. And and when we do that, I, when if you're studying the Bible, this is what I say all the time. I'm going to be gone one day from different places. I might be gone from Rome. I might be gone from my family. The Word of God is never going to be gone. So if you can learn for yourself to study the Word of God and to see that seamless thread yes. that runs from Genesis to Revelation of God's creation, people, people make mistakes, God's redemption, and God's plan for hope and a future. That is the power of God's Word. Let's look on page 22. It says, I have a feeling that the book of Isaiah was a favorite book. You mentioned Paul and, and the New Testament of the Apostle Paul. So you see, you can confirm the Word of God from Old Testament to New Testament. Remember, predicted, fulfilled, and we can see that thread. He quoted from it or alluded to it, Paul did, in the New Testament, at least 80 times in his epistles. In at least three of his recorded messages in Acts, chapter 13, chapter 17, and chapter 28. This interest in Isaiah may stem from the fact that Jesus quoted Isaiah 42, 7. When, in verse 16, when he spoke to Paul on the Damascus Road in Acts chapter 26. So if you're typing in the notes for me, Mary Davina or Boyana, I want you to type that, that thread that we have Isaiah 42, 7, 16, 42, verse 7 and verse 16. And we have Acts chapter 13 and Acts chapter 26 and Acts chapter 18 when Jesus and Paul are referring to what Isaiah said. So this commentary said Isaiah was also like an evangelist for Jesus because he was being called also to pr uh, promote the Messiah. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it says five times in his letters, Paul referred to Isaiah 53, the savior of the world. So I would say that this is a pretty important book for the days that we're living yeah, in right now. Be, yes. <laughs> and he wants us to be comforted. Um, as we study Isaiah and the prophetic plan for the nations, because you know, Sometimes people don't like to hear that there's a favorite, that the, that the children of Israel are the favorite or a favorite, but this is God's word and he has a reason for it and a plan for it. But it doesn't mean that I'm not favorite too. It doesn't mean that I'm not chosen. Yeah, that I, I have been chosen. In fact, you were chosen before you were born. Exactly. You were born. In you Jeremiah. Know, in Jeremiah, yes. <laughs> Before you were in your mother's womb. He chose He knew you and formed yes. you. Yes. And then he says to me, to, you choose today who you'll serve. Exactly. So I'm thankful for the systems of God in place because the systems teach us the process. And that's what we're learning from Isaiah. The systems of the reign of good and bad kings, of upheaval and peace mm -hmm. and turmoil and promise and blessing, that those systems teach us that even in our own life, there are going to be systems, there are going to be upheavals, yes, yes. but we can trust yes, yes. in the Lord, Lord our God. Yes, we can put our trust yes. in them. We can remain confident Yes. Yeah, that who called us is able to take us, you know, uh, to the to the end. Amen. The yes. Amen. So as we go to these questions, and I'm going to ask you to, to write some of these answers, but on page 23 of this, we are saying I, that this is this emphasis on the personal message of God's forgiveness Though their sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they'll be as wool. Um, it says that I, even I, he, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. I will not remember your sins in Isaiah and also in chapter 43, verse 25. Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, 5. Do you need healing today? Isaiah speaks to the healing of God. That Jesus bore those stripes on his body for our healing, for our peace. Can you imagine the turmoil that he was feeling on the cross? If you're feeling in turmoil today, I want you to know that Jesus, Jesus he took terrible. it. He took it. Amen. Yes, yes. And Isaiah said, who hath believed our report in yes. Isaiah 53, 1? If you will not believe, surely you will not be established. Yes. 
If you have never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and received him into your life, we're admonishing you. This book is admonishing you. Do it now. Look to me and be saved from the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. And then we see in Acts 4.12, read us that last verse, Mary. Okay. Uh, Nor is the salvation in any other way, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Amen. But in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. So we have a few minutes, about 10 minutes. What would you say? We want to see some of your notes on what were some of the character traits that we have talked about in Isaiah? What's one character trait? Isaiah was, and you type it in. What is a character trait that we have seen from Isaiah? We want you to type that in. We're going to look at it. <laughs> what are some of the character traits that we see and have learned from Isaiah? So today, I, I I'm watching here too, so we may be a little bit delayed. What are some of the character traits that you picked up from Isaiah? He was, <laughs> type it in for us. Hi, Jenny Rose. Yes, We're yes glad Barbara. To see. Yes. Courageous. Yes. yes. Amen. 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 So maybe today God is saying to you, don't be fearful. Don't be worried. You can be, you know, I read something this week that touched me. Yeah, if you see yes, one. Yes, Ivy. Yeah. yeah. What did it say? I did say uh, courageous too. Yes, yeah. bold. Uh, <laughs> bold. Uh, mm -hmm. Julia, bold. Then we have, uh, who else is there? Yes, Mary, bold. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Um, that faith is not the absence of fear. I want you to think about that because sometimes when we are speaking about being people of faith, mm -hmm. sometimes people, someone might say, oh, you're just trying to be positive. No, I, I can acknowledge that I have fear, I have worry, I have concerns for my family, for my grandchildren, um, for someone who's sick and needing a miracle. But faith is not the absence of that circumstance. Faith is courage mm -hmm. in the midst in the of that circumstance. Yes. So even in Isaiah, we can see that, that there was international upheaval. Mm -hmm. There was chaos. There was people that were sinning all around him. But he was bold, as you have said. He was courageous. courageous. Yes. He loved his people. Yes. He had relationship with God. Yes. Thank you, Boriana. Mm -hmm. He loved his people. Yes. yes. He loved his nation. We should love where we live. I want you to ask the Lord. I want us just to pray for a minute right now. Would you do that with me? Right now, let's just pray for the city where we live, the country or the state where we live. Father, I pray. You know each of us. You know where we're living. You know where we have to do school and work and go to the grocery store. Help us to love the people of the place where we live. That we will pray for them that we will shine a light like Isaiah did, yes. that we will bring a message of hope and love and, and, and joy and an, a, a God who hears our prayers. Yes. So Lord, forgive us if we have not liked or had bad thoughts about the people about, yes. around the places where yes. we live. Lord, we don't want to be that kind of people. As a child of God, you've shown us in Isaiah's life to be bold, but to be loving, yes. to be truthful, but to be courageous and full of hope. And so God, we ask you for to give us a renewed sense of purpose in the cities where we live, yes. in the places where we live, yes. with the people of influence that we have the opportunity to do. Amen? Amen. 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 He was a man who spoke um, to a people. So while we have a couple more minutes, we pray for those places where we live, we shine his light. How about this? What personal needs do you think Isaiah might have? We're on uh, page 24, number four, if you're reading the book with us. What personal needs for comfort do you think Isaiah might have had? So we, we've talked about who he was and what he experienced, but I wonder what his personal needs for comfort might have been. Patience. <laughs> patience. He needed a, I'm sure he needed a lot of patience Absolutely. because dealing with people who... Uh, knew where God had brought them from and who were, were not ready to hear, you know, about this God who had really done so much for them mm -hmm. and whom he kept on, you know, speaking upon and encouraging. Yeah. 
and then seeing that they were not responsive, but they were concentrating on, you know, other gods. Yes. I mean, you can lose it. Yeah. You can throw in the tiles, but he did. And also, I mean, we read that he was married and he had children. Yes. So um, he wrote and, and was documented in the, in the book of Isaiah, the things of God. But I can imagine that he found comfort in his family, yeah. that he around a dinner table, around a family meal. And, you know, I know for COVID, some of us have not been able to be together as much as we could or to have to share a meal. But, you know, be comforted. That's what the name of the book is. Mm -hmm. And so we can imagine that Isaiah took comfort in having some of those gatherings yes. when he could with the people that he loved and cared for. Mm -hmm. I love that Mary said yes, that she would come and be with me today mm -hmm. and um, help us to speak to what is in the book of Isaiah. What do you think? You might want to type something in. What do you think Isaiah might have needed to be comforted with? Uh, we'll give you just a minute and then... Um, What do you think Isaiah needed to be comforted with? Mary, let's look at these notes here on number nine. Um, how important that, that is here okay. that you said. Okay. Um, um, <clears throat> well, uh, I, I think also Isaiah knew how to star uh, his listeners. Uh, or rather his audience, you know, he, he had uh, imagination on how to arouse, we saw that, uh, you know, uh, uh, their interest, you know, why, why did he, uh, you know, uh, have to do this? Because, because he had a motive, mm -hmm. you know, he had a motive and his motive was to teach them God's truth, mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, and the God's truth is to shine the light in them mm -hmm. because he, he had already made a purpose, you know, to uh, to let the light the God's uh, right shine in him, mm -hmm. so he wanted to impact the same absolutely to 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 uh, to, uh, to his people, mm -hmm. and so um, that was the motive. Yes, that was the motive. Amen. So I think that makes all the difference. If the motive is pure, yes, then the truth can be received in a way that is exactly mm -hmm. exactly. So good. We, that's something we you know. We also need to see, you know, the motive. Whenever we, you know, we interact with one another, yes. and whenever you are doing whatever you are doing, mm -hmm. then what's the motive behind it? Amen. I love that. It's a simple question that we should ask ourselves: What's the motive? And sometimes we even have to ask ourselves that when we're on the way to our duties, we're on our way to our work, and we can say, Lord. What is my purpose today? Yes. What is my motive for yes. doing my work, for going to this meeting, mm -hmm. for, um, I know some are working in the hospitals and we're praying for your health and vitality. Mm -hmm. um, so amen for that. Boyana also wrote that um, Isaiah probably needed real friends and Mary knows that the Holy Spirit was with him as a comforter. Yes, mm -hmm. Mary, so true, so true. Um, and so he had a mindset. Yes. Tell us about the mindset. <laughs> well, uh, Isaiah, okay, well, I think this we can see now that we have really sort of like uh, gotten a touch of who Isaiah was, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, Isaiah uh, had God's touch, was, was a man who was in, you know, in touch with God. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and he, he was also an evangelist. Yes. You know, he was, you know, talking of, of, about the Messiah. Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and so we see that uh, he had a mindset of Christ. Yes, uh, we see in uh, Philippians chapter two and verse five, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. Mm. To have a mindset of Christ is to have a real uh, experience of spiritual maturity. Oh my goodness, that's one we can, we're going to pick up right there <laughs> next week <laughs> because we are going to apply the principles in God's word. I love that, Mary, that you see, again, it's faith. Isaiah had not seen Jesus in yes. the human form. Yes. But he knew in his heart there was this Messiah coming. And he was a holy man inspired by the Holy Spirit to write these holy words that have prevailed for over 2,000 years in the Word of God. And we are having this 
value in the trust of Christ. So in my Bible, in the Life Application Study Bible, it says our trust must be in the Messiah. So today as we close, I want to remind you no matter what you're going through, I know Michelle is watching and she's had some surgery and some difficulty, but your daughter is amazing. I celebrate her victories with you, Michelle. Our trust must be in the Messiah, not in ourselves, not in a nation, not in anyone else's power. There's no hope because that hope is going to be crashed. Somebody's going to be disappointed. <laughs> But if you put your hope in the one who prevails, the one who is Jesus Christ, the one who is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, your hope will not be disappointed, the Bible says. Hope will not disappoint. Trust Christ fully and let him rule in the sovereignty of your life. And if we have, like Mary said, this mindset of Jesus Christ, we will experience the transformative spiritual maturity to handle things. It doesn't mean that there aren't moments when when God probably looks at me and I'm in my fourth or fifth decade of serving him, but he I'm like a baby to God. In I'm fact, still like a baby fact, to God. I, I like the way you said that last week that you can never you can never study God's word too much. No, absolutely so, not. Yeah. And so he continues to say, Hey my daughter, yes. listen up. I got something else to teach you today. Um, I am so thankful for my relationship with my physical daughters as well as my spiritual daughters, but we encourage one another the in the mindset of Christ yes. because we understand our motive mm. is to support one another. Yes. That's what we do at Bella Vida. Yes. That's what we do at Braveheart Girls, yes. that we encourage one another to have courage and compassion and conviction about the real truth of who God is. It also says this, we can be refreshed because Isaiah's message is gonna be true. I want you to remember, as Mary said earlier, his motive was to promote hope. Mm -hmm. He was truthful, but his motive was to bring the light of the Messiah, not to bring judgment without hope, mm -hmm. but to say, you know what? If you're sinning, if there's things in your life that are displeasing to God, we can have compassion because when we repent, no matter how difficult the circumstance is, no matter how dark, or even if someone has sinned against us, God will redeem our life. Yes. He redeems our life. And we learn from Isaiah that there is a warning. There is that time when we have to say, be careful what you're listening to exactly. in the world. Exactly. Go back to the word. Go back to the word of the Lord but then repent because the Messiah is coming and has come to redeem your days and to be the light of yeah. who God's love is. Thank oh, you. But also the, yes. you know, the, the one, uh, we should also uh, embrace the warnings. Yes, Mary, absolutely. Yes, because like, uh, remember in the, uh, someone that we read about the ones of, you know, uh, signs of symptoms or such. Yes. You know? <laughs> that's a when when yeah. you see a symptom of, uh, you know, a negative symptom. Yes. That's a warning of, you know, you're yes. going. It's so you know, true. I'm so glad you yeah. said that to finish, even mm -hmm. if we have to go over just a couple minutes. We won't go long because yeah. we have to be on time. Yeah. But um, we did symptoms of spiritual health yes. and symptoms of spiritual sickness. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be right if we only just Isaiah didn't even do it he didn't mm -hmm. say oh everything will be wonderful and don't worry mm -hmm. about anything well, he brought to attention yes. these things that we need to repent of these things that are warning signs because mm -hmm. if your whole heart is sick if your mind is sick if your life feels like it's not spiritually healthy and full of vitality examine those warning signs and and we can repent we can come to jesus with that humility and say god you're in control i am courageous mm -hmm. i operate in the dominion authority of the name of jesus christ but i also need the mindset of christ, christ. not yes. the mindset of the world mm -hmm. and so today we declare that we will have that mindset from heaven that will guide our actions here on earth i'm going to say it again mm -hmm. that we will have the mindset of heaven to guide our actions here on earth. I don't need the mindset of one country or another, but I also don't need to be worried about upheaval. I can pray. I can declare truth and love and a future hope because I have the mindset of heaven to live in victory here in this earth. So we're going to pray, and I'm going to pray for you. And I want you to agree that as we study the book of Isaiah, we will recognize, you know what? It's not new that the world is in upheaval. Yeah. 
It's been happening for years and years and years and decades and decades. But God has a message of hope for each and every one of us. So Lord, I pray right now for my friends that have joined us today and those who will join later, those who have been weary. Lord, this year has been a very taxing on us physically and emotionally and mentally, Some for some financially in our health. But God, you are the victor and we want to touch heaven and change earth. We want to touch the hem of his garment and see the healing yes. virtue you in every aspect. Yes. So I pray for your, your daughters and your sons today that as we study the book of Isaiah, we will see that no matter the circumstances yes. in our world, God, you have a message of hope. Yes. You have a Messiah that has already suffered on the cross yes. for our healing. Yes. And Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that we would hear the words yes. of hope and healing and victory, and we would trust in the mindset of heaven which is the mindset of God Almighty. From the beginning of creation till now, God created you. He has a plan for you and he's gonna give you the courage and the boldness like Isaiah to live for Christ, even when others around you maybe are challenging that. Yes. Don't give up, don't relent, don't shrink back. And when you feel weary, remember, we're praying for you. Amen. We are praying Amen. for you. We Amen. pray for one another. Amen. Have a super blessed day. Mary, yes. any last word you want to say? Just put your trust in God. Yeah. Yes. Just put your trust in Amen. God. No Amen. matter the circumstances, put your trust in God. Amen. Yes. We love you yes. all. Love we'll you. see Bye. you next week. God bless. God bless. Yes. And maybe we'll get a few more around the table. Amen. <laughs> God bless.